Welcome to China Uncensored, I'm Chris Chappell, and this episode is sponsored by Incogni. You probably know the companies are collecting your personal data, but you may not realize just how many. Dozens, maybe hundreds, most of which you've never heard of. You have no idea what they're doing with it. Incogni helps stop them. I'll explain more at the end. Well, finally happened. Secretary of State Antony Blinken finally got his meeting in Beijing this week. Now, I would like to say that's a good thing. But this whole trip has been a pretty spectacular disaster from the beginning. As the State Department predicted, there weren't any breakthroughs from the trip. Neither side budged on military activities in the Taiwan Strait, U.S. sanctions against Chinese officials, restrictions on technology sales, or the ongoing trade war. According to Blinken, China made some vague promises about maybe exploring helping the U.S. combat fentanyl, which sounds as promising as the last three times China said they would do something about fentanyl. What was clear, though, was that the Biden administration has now fully put the Chinese spy balloon saga behind them, at least until China does it again. So with Beijing, the balloon incident is over. It's water well, under the bridge. We did what we needed to do to protect our interests. We said what we needed to say and made clear what we needed to make clear in terms of this not happening again. And so uh, as long as it doesn't, that, uh, that chapter should be closed. I was worried the U.S. might actually make a stink about China violating U.S. airspace like that. I guess I shouldn't have worried, though. The Biden administration apparently isn't good at holding grudges. One of Blinken's main objectives of the trip was to restore diplomatic channels of communication. Blinken wasn't able to restore military-to-military -military communications. And as for meetings with other U.S. officials, China and the U.S. did commit to keep talking, with further high-level visits expected in the coming months including possible trips to China by Treasury Secretary Jan Yellen and Commerce Secretary Gina Raimondo. Yes, the old, we'll keep talking line. For China engagers, that's the nicotine that keeps them coming back. Tanner reportedly wanted Raimondo and Yellen to come before Blinken because, you know, who wants to be lectured on human rights when you could be making business deals? However, the Biden administration insisted Blinken come first. While there, Blinken met with Chinese Foreign Minister Qing Gan. CCP Central Foreign Affairs Commission Director Wang Yi, and, drumroll please, Chinese presentator Xi Jinping himself. More about that optics nightmare in a minute. But first, while Blinken may have trailblazed a diplomatic path by being the first Secretary of State to visit in five years, it's unclear where that path goes. China's foreign minister accepted an invitation to come to the U.S., but besides that, it seems like this trip was mostly about talking for the sake of talking. And while Xi Jinping made lip service to stabilizing the U.S.-China relationship, whatever progress was made on that front seems to have been scuttled the next day when Biden called Xi a dictator. During a fundraiser on Tuesday, Biden said, China has real economic difficulties. And the reason why Xi Jinping got very upset in terms of when I shot that balloon down with two boxcars full of spy equipment in it is he didn't know it was there. No, I'm serious. That's what's a great embarrassment for dictators, when they didn't know what happened. Predictably, that angered China. China's foreign ministry called the title extremely absurd and irresponsible. And I have to agree, it is irresponsible. Biden should be calling him a dictator to his face instead of talking about him behind his back. And after the break, the optics of this visit really couldn't have been worse. Welcome back. Blinken may say that he achieved his goal of opening communication with China, but it came at a huge cost. And by cost, I mean in terms of Biden's credibility. This meeting was supposed to be a follow-up to Xi and Biden's meeting last November in Bali. It was scheduled for February, but then that silly spy balloon traveled across the entire continental U.S. Blinken called off his trip at the 11th hour. Literally, while the spy balloon was still in U.S. airspace, Blinken decided to postpone his trip. And when I say postponed, I mean that literally, too. It was never meant to be canceled. The State Department made it pretty clear that, as soon as it didn't look like treason, Blinken was going to reschedule his trip. Of course, China dragged its feet on making that happen, and I'm sure the Chinese government enjoyed every second of the Biden administration groveling to get the meeting back on. Then, when his trip was finally announced, it was just a few days before the departure date. And it still wasn't clear who Blinken was going to meet with while he was there. Things didn't improve for Blinken once he got there. 
It has been customary in the past for the Chinese leader to meet with visiting U.S. secretaries of state, but Monday's meeting wasn't confirmed until 45 minutes before the two men shook hands, a sign of how carefully orchestrated this trip has been. Yes, carefully orchestrated to maximally make Blinken look unimportant. I mean, just look at the seating arrangement. I don't think they could have made it look more like an emperor holding court if they tried. All that's missing is people lining up to kiss Xi's ring. Meanwhile, Bill Gates not only got a meeting with Xi Jinping just days before Blinken, but somehow he knew well in advance that he would be getting one. And as I'm sure you've noticed, he wasn't seated a mile away from Xi either. Now I'm not the only one who thinks the optics of this trip were terrible. For Blinken, I mean, Xi looked like the regal dictator he is. According to the New York Times, to nationalist-leaning audiences in China, especially on social media, Blinken arrived only after months of pleading for an invitation. And during his visit, he was schooled on respecting China's interests and played supplicant to Mr. Xi. Yes, while Blinken thought this trip was about responsibly managing the relationship, China just saw it as more evidence of U.S. weakness. When Biden came into office, he talked about relentless diplomacy as a core tenet of his foreign policy strategy. And look, I get that the State Department's job is to talk, but there's no point in talking if it doesn't actually further any of your goals. Sometimes walking away from the table is the most effective. That's what China did to the U.S., and the Biden administration made all kinds of concessions. And especially with the Chinese Communist Party, you have to have both carrots and sticks ready, because they're not going to do anything unless you make it in their interest. Chinese officials are happy to talk until you're blue in the face, because the more they can string you along with false promises and empty talk, the better their chances are of not actually getting their feet held to the fire. So a word of advice to the Biden administration, get yourself a good book on deal-making. Might I suggest The Art of the Deal? Unfortunately, how bad this trip was didn't end there. The Biden administration did a lot of backbending to make this trip happen. It not only made the U.S. look weak, but it hurt the Biden administration's credibility in the eyes of many Americans. We reported before about how the Biden administration withheld sanctions, export controls, and other things to manage the fallout over the Chinese spy balloon. And it appears it's also withholding the results of the FBI investigation into the spy balloon as well. One Chinese official confirmed to Reuters that a renewed Blinken visit would be more likely if the U.S. accommodated Beijing's wish to shelve the spy balloon issue adding that China had conveyed it did not want the FBI to release details of its investigation into the downed balloon. Well, the balloon was shot down in early February, and it's already June. NBC quoted one current and one former senior U.S. official who had been briefed on the investigation as saying it's been completed. At the end of May, the White House claimed they didn't know the status of the investigation, but said they expected the results to be released as soon as it was over. I'm guessing that when they say, as soon as it's over, they really meant all the China meetings they wanted to see happen first were over. Biden's gamble seems to be that delaying sanctions and playing down Chinese espionage will improve relations with Beijing. Yeah, just give in to everything they want, don't make any demands besides that China keep talking, and everything will be fine. China definitely won't see that as weakness it can exploit. A group of Republican lawmakers have asked Biden for answers on the FBI investigation as recently as last week. Not only about the investigation results being withheld, but that the Biden administration hasn't been doing enough to hold China accountable. Another thing that could have scuttled Blinken's trip was the reports that China was building a spy base in Cuba, just 90 miles from U.S. soil. The White House was quick to label those reports inaccurate. But it later said that China's been spying from Cuba since at least 2019, so definitely nothing to cancel a trip over now. The Wall Street Journal reporter who broke that story told NPR the White House was not happy to say the least because it came as Secretary Blinken was prepared to go to China. Well, that same reporter bylined another story this week saying that Beijing has plans for a new military training facility in Cuba. According to the journal, U.S. intelligence reports say those discussions are at an advanced stage, but they're not finalized yet. Blinken said he made very clear that the U.S. would have deep concerns about any Chinese military activities in Cuba during his meetings. A real warning shot there. I'm sure China heard about U.S. deep concerns and is now rethinking its plans. But if the Wall Street Journal's reporting is accurate, it certainly looks like a case of the White House denying blame and shifting the story. Maybe they didn't want this intelligence out there for other reasons. 
instead of clarifying what in the reporting was inaccurate, they just made it sound like this was an old problem, as in nothing to cancel a trip over. The Biden administration also missed its deadline to declassify documents on the origins of COVID. In March, Biden signed the COVID Origins Act of 2023. That gave the government 90 days to declassify the intelligence. Fortunately for Biden, that deadline fell on one of the days Blinken was in Beijing. An administration official quoted by NBC News made it sound like it was taking so long because they were just doing their due diligence. The official said the Office of the Director of National Intelligence is currently carrying out a careful declassification process and that getting to the bottom of the origins of COVID-19 remains a priority for the president. However, he or she didn't say when the documents would be released. Republican Senator Mike Braun accused the Biden administration of missing the deadline so as not to anger China. He said the White House is now overdue to declassify their COVID lab leak intel, and there is no Secretary of State is meeting with Xi Jinping exception in the law President Biden signed. And after the break, isn't Taiwan a part of China? Welcome back. China says Taiwan is part of China so often it must be true, right? Well, that was the confusion surrounding soccer star Lionel Messi's recent trip to China. Messi arrived at a Beijing airport on Sunday. He has both Spanish and Argentinian passports, but he only brought his Spanish one this time. In China, Spanish citizens need to get a visa before they can enter, which is not the case in Taiwan. After Messi was stopped for not having a visa, he reportedly asked, is Taiwan not China? Quoting Chinese media reports, the Epic Times reported the question resulted in an awkward silence as the customs staff in Beijing couldn't respond. Well, that certainly is awkward. Who would have ever thought a soccer player would be the one to so perfectly point out China's hypocrisy? Score for Messi. That wasn't the only news that came out of his visit, though. A Chinese fan of his rushed onto the field during a match with Australia. Here you can see him running onto the field and quickly hugging Messi before running away from security. He gives him a pretty good runaround before tripping and falling over, which allows them to catch up. The fan has reportedly been banned from entering stadiums for 12 months as punishment. Hong Kong's protest anthem disappeared from Apple Music and Spotify last week. The anthem was associated with the 2019 democracy protests in Hong Kong. I would play you a clip, but YouTube would probably ping us for copyright infringement and then take all of our ad revenue. The Hong Kong government has been seeking an injunction against the song. It wants to ban the sale, distribution, or playing of the song, even online. So you better hope you're not the DJ at a rugby match and accidentally choose the wrong song. You may just get charged for sedition. And could a rat be a duck? Those don't seem like two animals that would be easily mixed up, which is why it's causing a big stir on Chinese social media when a student was told a rat head found in his food was really a duck neck. A student at China's Jiangxi Industry Polytechnic College found this in his food at the school's cafeteria. The school and later local authorities tried to convince the student that it wasn't what he thought it was. Because I guess in China, ducks have teeth sticking out of their necks? In a totally not coerced clarification video he later posted online, the student said, I found out it was not a rat head, but a duck neck, so I would like to clarify. However, netizens were not convinced, and so the provincial government launched its own investigation. According to CNN, the provincial investigation team concluded that the foreign object was not a piece of duck neck, and that the local market supervision bureau and the school had reached a wrong conclusion because they did not investigate diligently. Um, I'm pretty sure you just needed to see the teeth and eyes to know that it was not a duck neck. But good thing they got to the bottom of it. The rat head incident has spawned a whole genre of duck rat memes on Chinese social media. So I'm confident that whatever the fate of the duck rat, its memory will live on on the internet. And this episode has been sponsored by Incogni. Whenever you do anything online or use apps on your phone, there are a huge number of companies that collect your personal data. When I signed up for Incogni a year ago, I discovered there were dozens of data brokers that potentially had my private information without my permission. Some types of data theft you can easily stop, 
like by not using Timu to shop or using TikTok to whatever. But other types of data theft are harder. A lot of private companies are accessing your data because you accidentally gave permission through a third party site. But there's a way to stop them. That's what Incogni does for you. It writes to these companies using specific legal language, forcing them to delete your personal information. Incogni has already gotten my details removed from 102 of these sketchy data brokers, with a lot more in progress. And I didn't have to do anything after signing up. Incogni just handles it. So I recommend you get Incogni for yourself. Click the link below or go to incogni.com slash uncensored. For a limited time, the first 100 people to use the code uncensored will get 60% off. Get your personal data off the market with Incogni. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. Thanks for watching China Uncensored.